wife of 11 years, two kids, 11 and 9. She cheated for 8 months, I knew for the last 3, still working on it. Looking for additional advice and sharing my experience, since I got a lot of help from reading this sub. Long story short, married to wife for 11 years, two kids 11 and 9. She cheated for 8 months, I knew for the last 3. I did not confront her until I had evidence lined up, including video, and a separation agreement in hand from a solid lawyer. This is about 9 months ago, I guess it would be called D-Day here. I waited for her to get home from her affair partner. She had no idea that I knew anything. The second she saw me sitting at the table, she got very nervous, I asked her to sit down because we needed to talk. I was totally cried out at this point and didn't really care, I had decided that divorce was the only option, the day I first found out. Wife sits down looking very panicked. Wife, you are scaring me? What is this about? Me, I am not here to discuss your infidelity, I know everything. I am here to sort out our separation and divorce. I put my wedding ring on top of the folder with the separation agreement inside and pushed it in front of her. The wife starts bawling begging, apologizing, pleading. All the usual stuff. We get nowhere, I just toss whatever she comes up with, back in her face. I love you, me, you hurt me the worst I have ever been hurt and sleep with other men because you love me so much? After a couple of hours, I tell her to go to a hotel and that we will continue tomorrow. I tell her if she doesn't sign the separation agreement, I will tell everyone today what she has been doing. I know, signed under duress, but at the time, I just wanted it to end. She ends up signing, she leaves and I receive messages and calls all night. I answer occasionally in one short responses. Mainly, I will not read this message or talk to you until tomorrow afternoon. The next day the severity of the situation has sunk in with her. She begs for another chance, marriage counseling, etc., she will do anything. I informed her that I would file on Monday and that she had 90 days to convince me that divorce is a mistake. I don't know why I offered that. I was weak, I had decided to end it and I just folded. The next day, I had prepared a list of things she had to do. I didn't show it to her, I just told her the list existed and unless she abided by it, we would be no contact apart from the kids and that the divorce would be unstoppable and I would inform everyone of what she had been doing. I also informed her, that even perfect compliance was no guarantee that we would not divorce, that my trust in her at this point was below zero, and that I didn't even love her anymore. She killed what we had, and the only reason I considered reconciling and building something new, was our kids. I didn't mean to say this, again I couldn't follow through on what I had decided to do. The list consisted of the following. 1. No lies, she had to make a document of everything she had done with him, describe how it started, what in her mind gave her the right to do this to me and to her own children. If she cut corners rose tinted anything or omitted anything, all efforts on my part would be over. 2. Full access to all social media phones, computer, her salary and bank statements. 3. She would report where she is and what she does at all times. 4. Individual for her two to three times a week, until she could understand her own choices, only later marriage counseling. She agreed, made the list, gave me access. Then I told her about point five, six, seven in sequence only after she carried out each task. 5. She had to meet AP's wife face to face and tell her everything, and hand over all the evidence she had an offer to be a witness in court if needed. She refused at first, she managed to say she couldn't do that to him. I pointed out that she made a choice, AP's feelings over her own family. If she didn't do this, this reconciliation attempt was over. I was going to tell AP's wife if she didn't. If she wouldn't own this, there was no willingness from my end. If I had to tell her, there would be no chance of ever reconciling. In the end she agreed and actually told AP's wife everything. AP's wife slapped her, kicked her, pulled her hair, screamed at her. Wife took it and didn't fight back. I didn't protect her. She got some gashes and some bald spots. In the car afterwards I informed her that AP had been seeing another woman in addition to my wife, and showed her the evidence from the private investigator I hired. I am ashamed of how much I enjoyed watching her pain, when she realized she was just another piece of meat to this guy. 5. She had to explain herself to the kids and what the likely outcome for our family would be. 6. Explain what she had done to everyone in our family and our friends. 7. I would have an affair for 3 months, I would lie to her face, sneak around behind her back. Form a deep emotional relationship with another woman. I needed her to understand what she asked me to forgive, the humiliation, the pain. She would understand we risked that I could fall in love and leave her for my AP. 
At the end of the three months I would tell her everything truthfully. Number 7 was especially hard on both of us, I would sneak around and act like I was cheating. I had Tinder installed, I would make sure she got glimpses of it every now and again. I would pretend I was secretly texting. I would go out and be gone all night. I would go away for weekends. In reality I wasn't seeing anyone. I just stayed in hotels, rented cabins and airbnbs. I would just get drunk most of the time and cry. Wife was freaking out more and more, I felt terrible as well, I hated it. I could barely do it and I was only pretending. She did it with such ease. I think this is the hardest part for me, I can't see her in the same light. I wanted to show her what she asked me to forgive but instead, I learned what a horrible person you have to be to do this to someone else. We are now in marriage counseling and she is making progress, me not so much. Some days are worse than others I guess. For now, I keep the divorce papers on the ready. For some reason I have not pulled the trigger. Not entirely sure if I understand why. We haven't been intimate or very close, but we are not fighting anymore, so I guess that is progress. She is very apologetic, I know we have a long way to go. Who knows where we will end up. I can't get past how terrible I felt when I pretended, yet she did it with ease. I just can't see her in a positive light. I see her as a monster. I wish I ended it the first day, but now that I have dragged us both so far along, is there any way for me to move past seeing her like this? I have forgiven the rest, I just can't get past this. Edit, I told her that I hadn't actually been seeing anyone after just 7 weeks. I couldn't keep up the charade, I just felt horrible from it. Edit 2, thank you for all the helpful input, I will take my new perspectives, and see if I can make any progress. I will post an update in a few weeks if anything works. Now for the top comments. I used to wonder if maybe the reason he cheated and I didn't, is simply because he had the opportunity. But I wasn't tempted in the same way. But I eventually understood, as you have, that infidelity is hundreds if not thousands of deliberate decisions to disrespect you. Even pretending to do it sickens you, yet she did all that, and, had it in her to keep lying, manipulating, gaslighting you and your family and your friends. I can't say you'll ever move past this realization to see her the way you used to. I can say perhaps that's why you've held on to the divorce papers this long, to finish what she started. Divorce doesn't end the marriage, the cheating already did. This is what I am thinking too, but still I can't seem to pull the trigger and end it. For some reason, I am holding on. I see her as a monster now. I just don't know if I can change that. I will bring it up in counseling as well. Thank you. Just a note that if it's a marriage counselor, it's usually in their interest to keep the couple together. If you don't have an individual counselor, I suggest to try that, it's great for an unbiased perspective. I gave the cheater the choice to end the marriage and he did. Maybe it's not so much about who pulls the trigger, but how long will you suffer in a dying marriage just to see if it can be fixed? I will get a counselor for myself. If you didn't have the stomach to torture her as revenge, you should have just ended it. It takes a special person to revel in others dread. Yes, it was hard. I thought it would be good for me. That hurting her would make me feel better. But in reality I just damaged myself. I have nightmares about pretending to cheat still. On really bad nights I have horrific dreams of actually cheating. I'm so sorry you were betrayed and hope you can find a path to peace. I sort of think you should just explain this to her. Show her how maddened her treachery had made you, but then regain your sanity, by ending it right there and then. She will have felt the full weight of consequence due to her actions, and you will have an actual chance to heal. Don't try to force something that will only cause you more pain. I have talked to her about it, she has tried to trivialize it earlier. I guess I just don't trust or believe her. Maybe that's why I'm staying around? To get her to see this, face it. Now for the next story. My ex, 28 female, messaged me today after no contact for almost two months saying she's sorry and that she wanted to know if I would give her another chance, but she honestly hurt me a lot when she left and over the time we were together. Do you agree that I shouldn't let her back in? So, my ex and I were going on 7 years together and she ended it out the blue. Well, more so I should say, she ignored me for a few months and selfishly refused contact with me until she was ready to leave me to suffer alone. Now I know I brought my own doom upon me for not leaving sooner and I may be stupid for that, but I never wanted to lose the woman I was madly in love with. She was the type of person who got angry at absolutely nothing, and always did. She started literally every fight we ever had. Let me give you some examples, I once crossed the road without her and she reacted by crying, 
pushing me off of her in front of everyone, telling me to F off, and then had me stay with her while not saying a single word to me for hours, until I went home just to finally apologize for her behavior. Another time she thought I had killed a spider in her room, and reacted the same exact way. Her go-to, was to just start something and then shut down always saying, this is how I feel, I can't control it, yet not even try to change. She was manipulative as hell, and so controlling. I couldn't have my own opinion or thoughts, it was always her way or no way. She would overreact to absolutely everything and just get crazy out the random. But I could never say anything because she couldn't handle criticism. If I ever told her no or that I didn't agree with her, she took it as a personal attack and would get pissed all over again. She hated that I hung out with my friends, but she never took the time to actually get to know them. I would invite her to come, but for whatever reason she had decided, I don't like your friends, they steal you away from me. She would always bring that up, and try to make me feel like I am putting her in second place when that was never the case. She was angry all the time, major problems at home with her alcoholic slash emotionally and verbally abusive father, and always took it out on me. She could never talk to me when she was mad, even if I had nothing to do with the problem. She would call me a bee for not fighting back with her. Maybe, I was, a bee though, because I never stood up for myself. She would yell in my face and curse me out until I cried, she would punch me in the chest and arms and want me to say sorry to her, for making her upset. She never once said sorry for all the times she hurt me. Her excuse was, I can't change how I feel, I don't think I can ever forget that you did this, and my idiot self always said sorry. I always told her it was okay, when it never was. I had to bite my tongue, because in my heart, I still loved her and wanted to be there when she became a better person. She expected me to read her mind, instead of actually communicating with me and saying what she wants or needs, and then would be angry that I didn't do whatever she was thinking. Anytime I liked something she didn't, her response would be, oh that's stupid, I don't like that. She took away the words I love you and any affection when she was angry. I was so freaking patient and understanding, that she had a lot of crap wrong in her mind, but I never should have accepted all the mental abuse she put me through. She found it so easy to not talk to me for a day or so, when I could barely go a few minutes without replying if I was able to. She was never a good texter so she would go a few hours without replying, but would get mad at me if I didn't reply immediately. And when COVID came, she super shut down and probably had the worst time of her life happen to her. She lost her job of nearly 10 years, and had to deal with her father drinking himself into a coma and nearly dying, just to go right back to drinking after he got back home. Which I know took a huge toll on her, especially since I couldn't be around. She was very adamant about not seeing each other to keep her mom safe, which was fine, super careful and freaked out about the virus, so even when we saw each other the few times, we had no physical contact. Which freaking sucks, because both of us had tested negative. She told me I can't come over anymore and she won't be coming over, and I guess with there not even being a foreseeable end to this pandemic, she convinced herself that there was no point in her waiting for us. But she became even more angry during that time. She would start fights just to have a reason to not talk to me all day. She would be mad at her dad or brother for not social distancing, and just be pissed off at me. She started trying to make me jealous, by continuously telling me how hot some random freaking new musician she started listening to on Spotify was. And started working out, which I was so proud of her for, because she always felt ugly in her own body, but would try to put me down by telling me, oh wow, I have never felt more happy in my life before, than when I do after I exercise. She would also always go through my direct messages on social medias every single day, trying to find something there never was. I didn't have crap going on behind her back, but for some reason, she never trusted me in that crap hurt feeling, like I'm just being accused over nothing. Then the super crazy fights happened. The woman I loved became racist on me. For context I'm white, she is Latina. When the protests started, she was always saying how they are so stupid. I told her I don't agree with that, and they are for good reason. Now the rioting and looting, yeah, dumb, but the real message being portrayed is a real issue. I told her I would attend a protest in my life, and her immediate reaction was, why don't you go find yourself a little black girlfriend then? I mean who the absolute hell says such a thing? For the first time in my life I actually was angry, I told her that might be the dumbest freaking thing I've ever heard her say, and she grew a hatred towards me since that day. She started to become super prideful of being a Latina, and she started to do little stupid crap to get me upset, like randomly messaging me, Oh by the way, when I get married, I want to take my mom's last name, because I don't want to lose my Hispanic heritage, 
as if she wasn't always excited and telling me how she can't wait to take my last name. I had brought my dog out to see her, when she came and dropped some food off to me, and my dog gets a little too crazy and will bark madly and choke herself on the leash, so I picked her up and jokingly said to my dog, calm down Puta you're going to hurt yourself, and my ex immediately looks at me with disgust and says, I don't think I can have kids with someone who would talk to a dog like that, lmfao, real funny how she was upset I jokingly called my dog a bee, but she had no freaking problem calling me a bee in our fights. Somehow through all of this, I still cared. When she came to do it, she told me that it was all the fighting, and she knows it was always her who started it. There is something seriously wrong with her and she thinks she needs therapy, none of it was a lie. She was madly in love with me, but during this time apart, she realized she doesn't feel the same anymore. Don't for one second think that you did anything wrong because you didn't, you've been the most amazing boyfriend and are such an amazing person, but I don't deserve you. She acknowledged the fact, that she was angry all the time and always took everything out on me. And told me, you love me with all your heart, but I can't give you that. I can't give you the love that you need, that you deserve. You deserve someone who makes you happy and I know I am toxic for you. She messaged me yesterday asking if we could talk, saying she was really sorry, and wanted to see if I would want to work things out, but honestly, the damage has already been done. I love her endlessly, but I am no toy. She treated me like crap constantly and I always forgave her. I don't think she deserves another chance in my life. It would be pretty stupid to let her back into my life, right? Now for the top advice. She sounds like a nightmare. The timing suggests she chased someone else, and he sent her back into the dating pool. So, welcome to being her backup plan. You take her back, every bit of pain lost, is on you. So, are you that masochistic? A nightmare indeed, one that I don't ever want to fall back asleep into. I probably shouldn't even respond, why would I willingly drink that poison again? Holy crap! Well, replace 90% of what you wrote, and I endured that for almost 25 years. Wow. I'm white, she's Latino. Well half. She left me for another guy, but I know for a fact that that guy will dump her in about 60 days. We aren't there yet. I just filed, this is my first day. And she's dating him. I've talked with a lot of friends, females gossip and he's broken up numerous marriages, and people splitting up. He's a dog, and just going to use her. But I hope karma kicks her in the butt. I won't live my life being abused like that again. Don't go back. Please. Wow man, 25 years dealing with someone like that? I am sincerely sorry you had to go through that for so long. That's so crappy how she left for someone else, but like you said, karma will probably come around and bite her in the freaking butt. I'm glad you got out of that abusive relationship, even if it wasn't really your decision. As for the guy, F that trash. I won't allow myself to be her doormat again, living life walking on eggshells is no way to live. And that's it for this video guys, if you have thoughts to share, leave a comment below. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe if you like this content. I'll catch you in the next one. Good day everyone.